Hello folks, in this video we're gonna go through a summary of the Emacs tutorial. When you open up Emacs, you can um, access this tutorial by doing Control H and then T. Um, you can write over it with anything you like and uh, and kill the buffer and if you do control T again it reloads the same text I actually went through this tutorial from beginning to end um, and uh, I've uh, made a summary of it and this is the summary that I wrote okay, so let's begin very basic commands. Okay, this document is a summary of Emacs tutorial accessible by doing Control H and then T. I am the author of this document. There are a few ways to know, sorry, there are a few keys to know before anything else. First, if you do CX Control X Control C, it quits Emacs. If you do Control G, it cancels whatever you um, where whatever command that you were typing, it cancels it. Um, it lets you uh, get out of it. And uh, lastly, Control X K kills the current buffer. So uh, let me just uh, demonstrate what Control G does. Okay, so um, let's say uh, I want to um, describe a variable and maybe. Uh, the org, then you want to get out of this, um, then do control G and it gets you out of it. Okay, and the control XK kills the current buffer. So maybe you want to do control XK, it kills the buffer. Alright, now. Doing screen force. Doing screen force is all about navigating the document in screen force, not uh, line force or something like that, but screen force. So, um, Control V, move forward one screen force. Alt V, this M is often uh, bind to your Alt Alt key. Otherwise. The escape key would work as well, but I would just say Alt Alt B. If you do the Alt B, you move backwards one screen full, and this is an interesting one. Control L. The default behavior is to center on the cursor. If you do it a second time, the cursor is at the top of the screen. If you do the third time, the cursor is on the bottom of the screen. Let's demonstrate using this tutorial text. You want to go, um, rather than going by line 4, or um, or um, by each sentence or something like that, maybe you want to move one screen full at a time. So if you want to go one screen full forward, you do control V. As you can see, it, the uh, indicator is moving down. If you want to move up screen full, you do Alt B. You can see it's going up. And if you want to place your cursor here, right? And if you want to move the screen so that this cursor is at the center, so let's just begin like this. If you want this um, screen to move so that this cursor is at the uh, middle of the screen, you do Control L. Okay. If you do Control L again, it will be at the top of the screen. If you do it third time, it will be at the. Okay. Let me start here. Okay, first time it centers it. Second time. 
push it to the top of the screen third time at the bottom and if you do the fourth time it's at the center again so that's useful so here it says um uh, a little more explanation on control l first time you use it screen is centered on where the cursor is second time the screen is moved up to where the cursor is third time it is moved down to where the cursor is and uh, if you do it the fourth time it's centered on the cursor again and so on okay so it says if it is still unclear try it and we did we tried it okay basic cursor control is next Let's start with analogs of arrow keys. But these are analogs of your arrow keys. Let me demonstrate. Okay, so um, you can either use your arrow keys to move about, or you could do Ctrl P to move up, Ctrl N to move down, Ctrl F to move right. Control B to move left. Good thing about this is that you can pass. Well, I'll cover this in detail later, but you can pass an argument to your command. Maybe you want to move up by, I don't know, 10, 15 lines. What you do is um, to move up by 15 lines, you pass an argument starting with Control U and you press 15 and then do control P as you can see control P is the up arrow um, equivalent to the up arrow and control U15 is just passing um, a numeric argument to the control P command so the effect is hopefully if it works it will move you up 15 lines Okay, so let's do it. Control U, 15, Control P. As you can see, it moved up 15 lines. Okay, so I'm just, uh, uh, for your information, this L over here, just your line number. Uh, um, currently, we are at line 335. Okay, and that's the name of the buffer tutorial. This stars mean there's some changes to the document that's not saved yet. If I've saved this document, the stars will disappear. And this is what what's called the major mode that we will learn later. So currently we are at fundamental mode. Okay. Okay, so uh, here it says uh, more things to learn. Control A. Uh, moves the cursor at the beginning to the beginning of the line and control E to the end of the line. If you do Alt A, it moves the cursor to the beginning of the paragraph or Alt E moves it to the end of the paragraph. So let's just uh, do that. So we have a paragraph here. Um, let's move up, move forward a little bit. If you do control, okay, um, if you do control A, it moves you to the beginning of the line. If you do control E, it goes to the end of the line. If you do um, Alt A, it moves you to the beginning of the paragraph. And can you guess what will happen if I do Alt E? Hopefully it will um, either, I don't know, I hope it, it's, it will move here, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's try. Well, yeah. Um, rather than going by line, um, it does work. Um, sorry. Um, it, it seems um, it's not a paragraph for each sentence. Like, uh, Alt E goes to the first sentence, end of the first sentence, doing it again goes to the next sentence. So um, that's that. Okay, so here are the summary of what we learned. So um, control F is like right arrow, control B is like left arrow. Um, well, 
Alt F and Alt B pressed by not character but by word. So, so um, let's try that. So here, if I do, um, is it yeah? Alt F and Alt B. If I do Alt F multiple times, it, um, it look it uh, moves by word, move forward each word. If I do Alt B, it goes back by word. Okay, so it's a bit faster than just doing uh, uh, Control F it goes by a character, Control B back by a character. If you do Alt F and Alt B, that's faster, right? Okay, so um, Control U and Control P, it just analogs up the arrow keys again. Control U is like uh, up key, Control P is like down key, and we've covered this. Control A moves to the be beginning of the line, Control E to the end of the line. Alt A goes to the beginning of the sentence. Oh yeah, here. It's not the paragraph, it's the sentence. And Alt E moves to the end of the sentence. So we've covered all that. Okay, so it says, uh, I think the most useful commands um, from the above are Alt F or B for moving um, moving forward or backwards by word and Control A, Control E for move to the beginning or the end of the line and Alt A and Alt E for moving to the beginning or the end of the sentence for other keys um, they're just like arrow keys but as I mentioned if you pass a um, like this if you pass numeric argument to them it repeats by how many um, whatever uh, argument that you pass like if you pass the argument I don't know like 3 to control F you will move your cursor 3 characters forward and so on so that's why it still has use okay it says um, if you do this it will move you to the beginning of the document and this the end of the document so let's do it so the command that we are doing is um, this the beginning of the document and that to the end of the document so let's do it okay I've done it good all right so um let's, let's uh, move uh, a bit now. 200 lines now as you can see we are at line 201 so it worked okay here you go control u followed by a number is called a prefix argument so um, that's what I did um, I um, moved down like 200 times so the 200 was the argument that was passed Okay, and normally this repeats a command some number of times. For example, if you if you do Control U eight and then Control F, it forwards eight characters, right? Could also do Control U eight and then Control B to move backwards eight characters. So um yeah. Similarly, you could do Control U five and then Control P to move up five lines, or Control U five Control and to move down five lines and so on. It also do this. Um, do you want to insert um, this star character? I don't know. Fifty times. Just do it. Control U. Fifty, and then the star. And it did. Okay. So the passing an argument is very powerful. We've learned that uh, Control V and Alt V scrolls the buffer, but we can use um, the prefix argument here as well. Well, I tried last time; it kind of worked. So, um, um, this is remember uh, moving by screen fools, right? And it says you can pass an argument to it. Let's, uh, like, for example, Control V moves down screen fools, right? Alt V move up screen force. 
Um, let's see it works. Okay, so control U. Maybe I want to go down by 10 screen force. And then, and then, control B. Um, doesn't seem to work. But, I thought it would work, but anyway. Uh, oh, actually, it says, um, it scrolls the bot buffer down by three lines. And all V scrolls the buffer up by three lines. But uh, we've learned that this is a screen for not lines, so it, there's a mistake there. Um, what does work is if you remember the arrow analogs, um, this one. So if you want to move down by, I don't know, um, 20 lines, let's do it. You have to pass 20. Um, to this control N, right? So let's do it. Control U, 20, and control N. And it just it moved, moved down by that amount. So that worked. Okay. Okay, so it says this is like using a mouse to move the scroll bar. Okay, like moving around vertically. Here we go at Control G command again. Okay. Control G is used to deal with Emacs when it stops responding as well as discarding a partial command that you don't want to learn, run, or even a keystroke that you typed in by mistake. It's all about cancelling out of it. That's what Control G does. For example, let's say you wanted to move up by 10 lines. That is accomplished by Control U10 and then Control P, right? And you mistakenly typed control U hundred. You don't want that. You don't want to um, go up by hundred lines. You wanted to go up by ten. So to get out of that, you can type control G to cancel it, and then type the command again. So you want? I will demonstrate. So um, well, you made a mistake and did control U and hundred. If you want to cancel out of that, you do control G. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Disable commands. There are several commands that are disabled by default for the sake of beginning users. Description for Control X, Control L says it converts to lowercase the selected region. And you can select with Control Space. I'll get to that in a minute. However, when this command is run presents a menu saying that it is a disable command. From this menu, for example, you can type space to apply it once or type N to cancel it. For example, you could select the following region, this list item, and do Control X, Control L, space to convert the text to lowercase. So this becomes lowercase. Okay. But the point here is that the command presents a menu when run because by default it is a disabled command. I'll go through this um, example because um, particularly because of control space what it does. You use control space to um, select a region. Okay, so you, if you wanted to convert this um, line lowercase, maybe you want to select it as a region first. You do control space and then use your arrow keys and you can see that it's been selected and then you do control x control l because this is a disable command it gives you the menu on what what to do next and you do um, space to do it once and you can see it's converted to um, lowercase i'm just guessing that maybe to uppercase is control x control u i haven't tried but Let's select the region again with control space and do control x control u. Yep, it moves it uh, rendered back to the uppercase again. Okay, Windows. The Emacs tutorial mentions the following example first control u0 control l. To make current line become the 
top of the window you could also do control u 10 and then control l for instance to make current line become 10th line of the window okay what it means is um does the same thing as um same thing as let me just try control u 0 control l okay second so i'll put it here control u zero control L. yep um so it does the same thing as um um pressing control l two times because um yeah if you do control l one one time it centers it if you do a second time it goes to the top the same as control u zero and the control l okay then Control H here. That Control H normally has to do with the help stuff, and Control H and then K displays a um, description for a particular keystroke. In this case, Control F. Um, do you remember what Control F does? It's an arrow key, right? So Control F it just moves you to the right. Okay. All right. So um. As you may have guessed, Control H K is used to display description of a keystroke. In this case, Control F. You will see that current window shrinks, shrinks, and a new one appears to display documentation for that keystroke. It hopefully informs us. It helpfully informs us that it is a short, short form of the forward char command. You can run the forward char command by doing. Alt X followed by the command name. So there are two ways to run a command generally. First is its short form, uh, like Control F, and there's a long form that is the command name, forward cha. So forward cha or forward, forward character command has the binding set to Control F, and you can just to control F to, to execute the command or you, you can do Alt X followed by the command name okay so let me just it says it opens a new window so let, oh, let me show you okay so if you do control H control H and then K and then what command was it forward char isn't it whoops just again okay so control H K what's your, what you're doing HK. Okay. Ah, sorry. What is um? It's expecting. It's expecting a keystroke, not a text. But let me try again. Control H, K, and then Control F. You can see that the second window open and the first one has shrunk. That's what it means. Okay. If you do Control X one, it kills the other window, and the current window again occupies the whole screen. So let me try that. If you do Control X one, it kills the other window. Okay. Okay. There are many other screen related, related commands, starting with Control X. Okay. Okay. So um, inserting and deleting. By default, and indentation is reserved when line is returned. Okay, what it means is um, it's not always the case. Like if you are in a different major mode, um, the tabbing, um, pressing tab and um has different behavior. But in the fundamental mode, it should work. So let's say you got A B C. But okay, follow. Okay, so prefix the A B C with tab, and if you press enter, the indentation is preserved. Okay, there's a tab um, inserted for you when you type return. That's what it means. Okay, you can insert multiple characters by using the prefix Control U. For example, try Control U8 and then the star character. As you can see, Control U8 star inserts star character eight times. We've been through that. Well, if you still want to see, you do Control U, eight, 
to pass a numeric argument to the command. Which command? Just the character. Okay. Okay, here are some delete operations using the control and alt keys. The, this del is actually a backspace. Um, is it called? Uh, yeah, backspace. Okay, so it deletes the character just before the cursor. That's everyone knows that. Control D is the opposite. It goes to the opposite direction. It deletes the next character after the cursor. And Alt Delete kills the word immediately before the cursor. Alt D kills the next word after the cursor. Control K kills uh, from the cursor position to the end of the line. Alt K kills to the end of the current sentence. Okay. Okay, so it says um, there's a pattern in the, the above key bindings, uh, like um, del acts immediately before the cursor, while d acts immediately after the cursor. So you could say that the del key goes backwards, while d goes forwards. So like del deletes the character backwards. Control D deletes a character forwards. Let's try that. So if I do if I do um um if I do the del key it, it predictably deletes it. If you do control D it goes to the other direction. Like okay, so let me so if you do um control D it deletes the character on the right or the del key deletes the character on the left okay and if you do alt delete kills the word backwards while alt d kills the word forward there's a pattern there so like if, you, if your cursor is here and you do uh, alt delete it, will, it should kill the word on the left right if you do um, alt D, you should kill the word on the right, and it does. Okay. okay so control K kills from the cursor position to the end of the line, while alt K does it to the whole sentence. Um, oops, not there. So, um, so if you go here, and if you do, um, let me. Just Center that. If you do uh, Control K, it kills the single line, right? And what 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 it kills, you can reinsert by yanking, or it's called the uh, pasting in Windows Windows Word. So if you you just I uh, just undid it. If you do Control K, it kills the first line. If you do um, Control Y, it yanks it back. Okay. So uh, the difference between Control K and Alt K, the Alt K. Yep. If Control K deletes from the beginning to the end of the line, while it does Alt K does it for the whole sentence. So if you do Alt K, get rid of the first sentence. If you do Control Y to yank it back, there it is. So um, there is a distinction between killed text and deleted text. Deleted text cannot be yanked back. But of course you can undo it and, and restore it. But only killed text can be yanked back. And as I said, yank, yanking is like a pasting in Windows, right? So it says, uh, now on to killing a region of text. We set the region by control space. I've gone through it already, but you place the cursor here and if you press control space and move with your arrow key it selects it okay uh, so we set the region by control space from the cursor then using arrow keys to select a region then we could do two things we can copy or cut to copy it into clipboard do alt w to cut it to control w you can then paste it to where the cursor is by control Y. So control Y is called yanking. Only deleted text can be yanked. K 
field text can be pasted using Control Y, as I said just now. Previously, we covered Control K and Alt K. The kill text from these command can be reinserted. By contrast, deleted text is deleted and cannot be reinserted. Let's try it out. So here, try Control K with the cursor position after point. This will result in um, this portion being deleted. Sorry, killed, not deleted. So uh, we we end up with this, and then paste it by Control Y. So that's what's been deleted, All right? Um, as you can see, key is one two three is reinserted. Let me show you in action. Okay, so I'm here. We put the cursor here, and then do Control Y, and then Control Y. Sorry, let me let me say it again. We put the cursor here, and we do Control Control K, and then we yank it by yank it back by doing Control Y. Very good. Okay. A point about deleted text as opposed to kill text. It can't be pasted by Control Y, but it can be recovered by undo, which is done by Control X U. Um, I think it can also be undo undone by um, Control Slash. Anyway, we'll get to that. Okay, so um, deleted text can be recovered by doing undo, which just undoes the last insertion deletion of text. Actually, reinsertion of text by Control Y is called yanking in Emacs dialect. All kill text can be yanked back. Commands that remove a large text can generally be yanked, while a command that just deletes a character is deleted. For example, try Control U9 and then delete. Which you, which will you guessed it, kill nine characters backwards. Let's try that. So here, I do Control U nine, and then uh, is it um, Control B? Isn't it? Oops, it's moving. Okay, Control U. How many characters? Okay, control U, control U, 9, and then delete, it kills it, okay. Okay, so, so here, if you put the cursor here and, and do control U, 9, and then backspace, it will delete the numeric portion of it and leave just this command, I mean this string. And moreover, the kill text can be yanked back. Okay, which is this one. Um, it's pretty clear, but I'll just go through it for you. So we got this. We put the cursor here. I'm sorry. We put the cursor at the end. Control U nine, and then backspace, and you can yank it back by Control Y. Okay, very good. Okay, you may yank the kill text anywhere in the current file or even in a different file. You can also yank the same text multiple times, i.e. you may perform Control y more than once. To kill multiple lines of text in succession by Control k or Alt k without moving the cursor and yank it, it will yank them back all at once. So um, if I'm trying to kill this whole thing, uh, but I don't want to do it by sorry, do it by selecting the region or something. You can um, press Control K multiple times, and then if you do Control Y, it will yank it back as one. Normally, if you kill a text, then move the cursor and kill another text. Clipboard will replace the old older kill text with the new one. However, there is a way to get 
back the original text running alt y um, retrieves an older kill text with each invocation going one step back into the past but in order to use it you must first yank yank it the first time by control y followed by alt y you keep on doing the alt y it will eventually yank the very first kill text so let me do that okay so let's say um I, I kill the first line move the cursor and do the second line move the cursor and do the third line and you want to yank it back the very last kill text you do control y um and the yank operation one step back you do alt y sorry just let me try again okay so uh, you do three kill operations and you yank the last one by I'll put it here um, by control y and then move up and do alt y Ooh. Actually, it only it seems it only only works. Um, let's see, I think it only works by replacing, not inserting. You do control K, control K, control K, and then if you do control Y, that's the last line that was killed. You do Alt Y, so it's one be before that, and. Uh, the first one, um, the second one should be the first line that was killed, and it, it is. It's a way of um, traveling back in time and inserting that kill text at that time. Okay. Undo. We are like um, nine pages here. It's, uh, 15 pages long. Undo. It seems you can do Control X U and Control Slash to perform an undo. Either is fine, but Control Slash is shorter. Commands that don't change the text, like scrolling commands, um, like Control V, Alt V, Control L, Control N, Control P, etc., can't be undo. In general, only commands that made a change to the text can be undo. Passing a numeric argument to control slash is done by control u number followed by control slash as usual and this undoes the last end command. So let's look at this with an example. Let's start with this text over here. Line A, line B, line C, line D. Kill each line with control K starting with the first one. So in total, four kill commands are performed. What happens if we do control U3 control slash? This returns control B sorry, this returns line B, line C, line D. Do you see what is happening? It just undo the last three kill commands. First line is not there because that was the first kill command. So in general control U number prefix means perform the undo operation to the last end command. The difference between this and alt y is that control slash undoes but alt y yanks. Lastly the difference between killing text and deleting is that kill text can be yanked but deleted text can only be undoed. So um, I'll show you this in action. Okay so we got Okay, we got that. We killed the first line. We killed the second line. We killed the third line. And we killed the fourth line as well. Let's do that. If you want to recover line two, I'm um, sorry. If you want to recover line B, C, and D, and guess. Pass number three to the 
undo command. And we did. How do we get everything back? We have to do this, obviously. You have to pass or as an argument to the undo command. So let's do that. Oh. Oh, it seems um once you undo it, um it, you can't do it again. So let me show you. I'll kill the thing again, and then I'll do Control U for Control slash. It should give gives you back every line, right? What? Try again. Line A, line B, line C, line D. One, two, three, four. Control U four. Yep, it gives you back every line. Why? Because you took four times to kill every line. So if you go back, four steps back, it gives you everything back, okay? Very good. Files. You can create a new file by Control X, Control F. This is called finding the file. To save a file, do Control X, Control S. Emacs creates a file with file names ending with um, tilde. I think tilde is this, right? This, right? That is a backup of your file. If, for example, if you save the file name myfile.txt, then Emacs will create a file myfile.txt, and then this thing at the end. Okay, as a backup, you can also open an existing file by the same keys: Control X, Control F. Okay, so um, let me create a new file, but it won't save it, it will just find it. Control X, Control F, and then go blah.txt, and it opens it, right? Kill the. Um, I will kill it, because I don't need it. And. Can use the Control X, Control F to find an existing file. That is like opening an existing file. Okay, so um, do I have? Hmm. Okay. This is already open, but you can, you know what I mean. Okay. So this finds this file. Okay. So you can use the finding command, which is Control X, Control F to. Either create a new file but don't save it, or to open an existing file. To save a file, actually you have actually you have to do Control X, Control S. If you just find an non-existing file, um, you will not have saved it. You have to do Control X, Control S to actually save it. Okay, buffers. You can do Control X, Control B to list buffers and switch between them. This opens another window below your own buffer that lists the buffers and shrinks the current buffer to accommodate it. So let's do it. So Control X, B. Sorry. Control X, Control B. It opens a new window at the bottom. It lists all the buffer names. Um, some buffers only have the buffer names. Other buffers have associated file. So it's just a name for that file. Okay. You can do Control X1 to kill the other window. And your buffer takes up the whole screen again. Here is a peculiar part, so pay attention. 
while Control X, Control B opens a new window to list all buffers and their file names if, uh, if applicable. Control X B, so this is a difference. First one we tried is Control X, Control B. This one is Control X, just B. All right. Prompts for a buffer name to switch to. The difference is that the buffer chosen through Control X, Control B opens inside the second window, while the buffer chosen through Control X B occupies the whole screen. It replaces your buffer. So let's do that. Let's first do Control X, Control B. You, you move to the other buffer by Control X O, and let's open the scratch buffer. It opens it in a new window. Okay, that's what I mean. But if you do Control X B, it replaces it. Okay, so that's the difference. You can do Control X S instead of Control X Control S to save a buffer from another buffer, because it prompts for the buffer to save. Actually, it goes through the list of all changed buffers and asks for each one to be saved. Compare this behavior with Control X Control S, which saves only the current buffer so control x s it says no files need saving okay but if it did uh, okay so i don't want to actually let's Okay, so um, let's create a new, find a new file called whatever, and I change it, and I create another one, and change it, and then from uh, um, from scratch maybe. If I do Control X S, can you see it goes through each file and ask, do you want to save this file? I say no. What about the second buffer? It goes to the second buffer and asks me, do you want to save that one too? Okay, that's what it is. It iterates every change buffer and asks me to save it. Okay, extending the command set. There is a class of commands called extended commands. They start with Control X or Alt X. You've learned a few commands that start with Control X already, such as Control X, Control C for quitting Emacs or Control X S for saving some buffers. Alt X is used to execute named extended commands. Do you remember a named extended command? Um, I think it was um, for char command. That's an example. Okay, so here it introduces a new command called replace string that is used to replace a string with another in a region or a whole file after the cursor. So it just replaces a string with another string, right? We execute this command by doing Alt X as, as I mentioned before. Alt X replace string, then string to be replaced, and then string to replace it with. Many other named commands are executed by Alt X, such as for char command. And do you remember the sh shortcut binding for short um, for char command? I think it was. Um, Control F, I think. Is it? Oh. Yep. Control F. Yep. Sometimes there is a short form that starts with Control, like Control F, which is a binding for for char command. Just for your information, Control H W replace string shows you that there is no key binding for the command so control H as I said is about the help all the help functionalities and W I'm um, just show you the what key binding is for that command okay so let me show you if I do control H for help W for keep um, key binding and if I do forward, forward char what do you expect it will say up here or whatever it will say control F right 
Here you go. Four chines on Control F. Just the help functionality. I'll just go through a replace string with you. This, um, it involves executing the named extended command, which is in this case replace string command. So um, let me maybe I want to select this region over here and go Alt X replace string and it says uh, replace string in a region which is here yes oops a second why is it not let me just do this then right so I select the string and go You play a string. Why is it not? Uh, let me try once more. Play a string. Play string in region. Ah, okay. Sorry. I have to select the region and then tell which which uh, string to look for and then what string to replace it with. So let's say TDD. Um, Maybe. Oh. Um. Well. Let's just move on. Okay. I'll um, revisit that later at the end. Okay. Auto save. Emacs periodically saves the file you're editing to sharp file name sharp. When you save the file normally that file is deleted. Say your machine crashed while editing your file. When you run uh, Emacs again and find the file, you can do Alt X recover this file on it to recover the auto save data. So that's a useful feature. Echo area. When you type a command, for instance Alt X and something, the command you are typing is displayed at the bottom in what we call echo area. So this is the echo area. Mode line is the one top of echo area which is this gray line over here so this is the echo area that's the mode line okay so the mode line is just above the echo area and it displays some information about the buffer you're editing could be like this let's go through what it means the star at the beginning means there are changes in this buffer to be saved if you save the changes it changes to here yeah, like this it, the stars are gone tutorial is just the name of the buffer 64% is how much of the buffer has been scrolled. L817 is the current line number. Fundamental is the major mode. Autofill is the minor mode being in use here. Only one major mode can be in effect at any time, but you could do multiple minor modes. Searching. You can search forwards or backwards. We do Control S for forward search and Control R for reverse search. We do Control S or Control R again for the next match, forward or backwards. Every time we do this, the cursor moves to the next occurrence. Del key moves the cursor back to the last occurrence, or when there is no up last occurrence, deletes a character from echo area. So let's say um, we go back to uh, tutorial. Uh, let's say I'm gonna search for word Emacs. If I do Control S, and you see the cursor is moved to the next occurrence. If I do Control Y, con um, it goes backwards, right? And if I if I do um, delete, oops, sorry, Bridget.
Okay, so let's try again. Emacs. We'll go forward a little bit. If you do delete, it goes backwards. And if there's no normal match, can you see here in the echo area it deleted S character? So that's what it means. Multiple windows. We can split the screen to contain two windows by Control X2. As you learned later, I mean, as you learned earlier, Control X1 kills the other window. To jump between split windows to Control X0. Control Alt V scrolls the other window forward. But how do we go in the other direction? I don't know. Let's stop there and go through it. Okay, so um, if I do Control X2, it divides the window into two. If you do Control X O, it goes to the other window. Control X O, and if you do con if you wanna if you do Control Alt V, and you see um unfocused window is scrolled forward, right? Without changing um how um the window is active. Cursor stays here, but this window scrolls by Control V. But as I said, how do you go the other direction? Um, here it says Control X4, Control F, followed by a file name, splits the window, opens that file, and makes move the cursor to that window. Let's do that. So Control X4 um, and then Control F and find the file what about this whatever yeah so you opened it and you can see cursor is moved to that window let's go multiple frames in a GUI environment a new frame of Emacs is just another instance of it so this is a GUI environment if I the new window, um, that's another frame that is open. Okay, so that's what frame is. Key binding to do the same is Control X five two. Try it now. It should open up a new Emacs instance. So I'll do it. Control X five two. It opens another frame. Cool. Control X five zero removes that frame. But frankly, on the GUI environment, we can just close it with a mouse click so let me try again control x52 moves another one I'm sorry it opens a new frame if you do control x50 it closes that frame okay so recursive editing levels I don't know what recursive editing level is but it mentioned it in the tutorial so to get out of recursive editing level do alt x and then um, escape key three times you can't use Control G for this purpose. In the mode line, recursive editing level is indicated by the square, bar square bracket surrounding a major mode. Okay, so uh, getting more help. Control H and then question mark gives you the following items that you can choose from. So let's just do this. As I said um, earlier, Control H is all to do with the help functionality. If you do Control H and then question mark. Gives you every every kind of um, help that you can get. So I just copy and paste it over here. Okay, so um, you can do it yourself. Just just to control H and then question mark and have a read through. Okay, so uh, I won't go through all of them. I just go through what is mentioned here. Let's go through a few examples. Okay, control H C is. Display the command name run by the key sequence. Let's let's do that. Control H C and then Control F. As you say, Control F runs the command for chart. So in, in this case, you say is um it ran on Control P, and you would say Control P runs the command previous line. Okay, so control P is called the character command. And uh, 
or is it the, uh, the previous line is a function. Okay, so um, you can also look at multi-character commands, which is uh, like combination of two characters, like Control X and Control S. So let's try that. So we're doing um, Control H C again. We are looking up this multi-character command. And this time the acquire says CXCS runs the command say buffer. So it just tells you what function is bound to this character command. Okay, so um, if you need more information about our command, you can do Control H K instead of Control H C. Control C just displays a one liner in the echo area. If you want more detailed information, you do Control H K followed by the character command. Try Control H K C P. So let's do that. Control H K Control P gives you the whole documentation for the command. So. Uh, if you do control H C and then oops control H C control P just brief okay so uh control H F and um previous line displays documentation about the function previous line okay so control H F is um, functionality where a given function name uh, so documentation is uh, displayed. Control H V displays documentation of variables, including those whose values you can set to customize Emacs behavior. Okay, so for example, org auto align text controls whether to keep text aligned when modifying headlines. To get this information, control HV. Control HV gives you the help for that particular variable. Control HA is command at purpose. Type in a word and Emacs will list all, all the commands whose name contain the keyword. All right. So uh, control H Control H A and maybe Emacs. Can you see? Um, it gives you every single command that contains the string Emacs. So that's com command of purpose. Lastly, Control H I is the info pages, which are like main pages but with hyperlinks. Actually, Control H R displays Emacs em Emacs manual in info mode. Let's do that. Control H R. Here is the menu and control H I. Let's get control H I. Control H I. Okay. Control H I. Yep. Control H I just goes to the info directory. Okay. Did I mention uh, this re replace string? Um, let's get help for that. Replace string is a function, right? Uh, CHF, try that. CHF replace string. So it gives you the documentation for replace string. Okay. Okay. Let me get some, some other help. Can I get another help? Uh, can I search it as a command? C H F place thing. There you go. Last time I searched it as a function, but this time I searched it as a command and it gives you the uh, info page for it to replace every instance of um, 
eso es. To replay every instance of foo up the point bar, use the command with two arguments foo and bar. Replacement happens only in the text after the point, after the cursor. Uh, so if you want to cover the whole buffer, you must go to the beginning first. All occurrences after the end of the buffer are replaced. Okay, so it seems um it doesn't mention the region. So let me just Okay, so I'll just finish with this replace string. I start with start of the buffer. I go um full bar down here, full bar actually Let's just stick with full. Let's replace full with bar, right? I, I put the cursor at the top and do alt x replace string. I want to replace full with bar. And it did. Okay? And I'll just remind you, you can get documentation by doing control H is all general help functionality so um you do control h and then con capital f and replace string it gives you the info page for that command okay so um that's about it conclusion if you don't get anything complain so if you don't understand something always ask and copying i wrote this summary using the Emacs tutorial accessible by Control H T. Enjoy Logan. So that is my summary note. Um, thank you very much. Uh, have a great, uh, great New Year. Bye.